Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Eric C. Welcome to my channel. First thing I have to say is give my, my heart and my condolences out to the people of Florida and to the people who have family and friends in Florida where the apartment building collapsed. Um, I have friends out there and family out there as well. And, uh, you know, luckily they're not in, in that complex, but, you know, close by enough. But I don't know. This world is really falling apart and falling apart quick. But anyways, um, this is going to be a video about what I think about the system for the drill for polishing and buffing anything. Stay tuned. All right, so I got the Bad Cat Zebra Stripe guitar. And I have to say for a kick guitar, this was pretty nice. A lot of kick guitars, there are, there's something that you're going to have to alter, uh, modify something to where it puts together and goes together the right way. There wasn't very much glue on this body. There wasn't uh, any problems where I had to shim the neck in order to install it and glue it in. Other than the frets being kind of crappy, um, which I probably could have fixed that anyways, but I wanted to customize the neck the way I have it now with the uh, inlays and stuff. So, I'm, you know, I was going to have to pull the frets anyways to make sure that everything has the same radius up and down the neck, uh, including the inlays. So, this has been a great build. I, I mean, other than a few little problems here and there that I occurred with uh, the clear and uh, this, like, getting this milky type white underneath the clear which I'm kind of wondering if it has something to do with the sanding sealer that's on here and that's a good question uh, the body came out pretty good now here's the body of it I mean you can actually see the dots in the cover for the fluorescent light now like I said fluorescent lights can play tricks on you they could be your friend or they could be your enemy when it comes to a finish and I noticed two little tiny dimples one there and one there real small ones and then I get it in the light you can kind of see it maybe I'm not sure but it's a clear thing and uh, I could sand it out but if I sand it out, I'm going to have to sand out the whole top. I can't just sand this area here because if I do so, you're going to feel a hump. And you may even notice it depending on how much I sand out to get those rid of those. They don't bother me. They're not very noticeable at all. So I'm not really, I didn't even catch them. Even when I was sanding, uh, there was no shiny spots there. So the back of this thing side came out really nice the tendon between the neck and the body uh, you don't feel nothing there is no hump no bump no nothing it's just perfectly nice and level I gave the back of the neck a matte finish the back of this thing came out fantastic I'm mean, nice and fucking flat uh, only one problem that I noticed with the side right here I don't even know if you could tell that or not but it's a little bit darker over here and I don't know why the rest of it came out fine, but I don't know why that one spot came out darker. I've got the tuners on the headstock, and uh, yeah, everything came out pretty good. The inlays are flush as hell. You don't even feel them. If you were, if you, I could feel these, and you would have seen a hump in the lighting as I moved it across the body. So the system that I use for polishing this what do I think about it well you can't really do a video or a say any type of a comment on a product that you never owned or didn't have or didn't have any experience with so for someone to make a video explaining about something um, and they have no experience with that product at all uh, it's kind of stupid and useless so this here I can actually say uh, what I think about it and I actually think it's pretty good this whole drill buffing system now remember you know the product that you're polishing is only going to be as good as the tools that you own or use and if you have a low-powered 
cordless drill or even a corded drill and that doesn't have the revolutions per minute, the RPMs, which means it doesn't spin very fast, um, you could be doing more damage than good. Because the way the cutting creams are, there's a, an abrasive in all of the polishing compounds, okay? If you go from stage one to stage three, or if you have more stages than that, there's, there's a mild abrasive, and it gets milder as it gets to the, the actual, um, like what they call a, a hand rub, okay? where you're actually using a cloth and you're doing it by hand for polishing, and that'll be like the last stage. But if you don't have enough RPMs, that pad and those cutting creams are not going to do what they're supposed to do. If you have too many RPMs, too fast RPMs, it's going to cut quick. So you're going to have to get the feel of it and know when to stop and be careful around the edges so you don't burn through it. Like I said, adding a little water to these pads and squeezing them out so they're just mildly damp helps out with friction and heat. So what do I think about it? Well, I liked it so much that I ended up ordering another kit. And this kit here has the other type of pads where they have kind of like a milk crate or not a milk, egg crate type of a uh, uh, texture to them on them. And it also has the flat pads too. The nice thing about these too, upstairs in the garage, we have a, a very small handheld air tool that is actually an actual buffer. It's very small. These also work on that as well, which is great because those pads that I have upstairs are on their last legs. So what I could say about this is it did a fantastic job. I, I mean, I wasn't expecting anything like this from some of the reviews, some of the uh, uh, just other people who have used something like this and said eh, it worked but it wasn't all that great now when i first got it i did test it out i had to i had to see what this thing was about and i didn't touch it on this i ended up polishing a piece of plastic and it came out to where um it looked like brand new again i had a uh, uh headlight lens upstairs in the garage that was a little bit uh not didn't have that that yellowing to it but it was a little bit hazed over it's just very old okay and it's plastic so i used the polishing pads on that with a little bit of rubbing compound and it actually came out like new and uh i was impressed you know having a drill that spins fast enough um really makes a difference with this now a question that i have and this is more of a cosmetic thing about this guitar. Most Les Pauls or Les Paul style guitars have pickup rings around, you know, the mounts, the pickup mounts, their rings. I don't mind them, but I do think they're ugly. I kind of like the clean look of the body and, and not having anything. The same thing with like a Strat. If you have a Strat that is got like a flame maple top or, or something like that, uh, why cover it up with a big pick art? You know, I kind of like the, 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 be able to see the body of the guitar. So with this here, I've got the black pickup rings. I've got the pickups. I'm going with the Seymour Duncan Mayhem set. And what I was thinking about doing is opening up the holes for the mount to where a screw can slide in and out. Instead of putting the pickup rings in there, I already did some measuring and just Drop these guys in there, all right? Now, I don't mean drop them in there and, and not have anything to support them, like springs or anything else. Um, I have some dense foam that uh, I've used on bass guitars for underneath the pickups when the foam that's underneath the bass guitar, you know, the, the P bases and shit, that foam breaks down. I've got other stuff to, uh, you know, make it work to where... I can still adjust the pickup up and down with no problems. So what I was thinking about doing with this is I like this look better. I don't want this to be traditional. This is not traditional, okay? I don't want it to be traditional. So I already did some measuring, especially over by the bridge pickup, because the bridge pickup has a thicker surround that makes the pickup raise up a little bit more. So I laid my straight out across with my bridge on there, and this is not going to stick up, you know, that much higher out of the body. So question. I've already shielded these guys and I need to, I got some pipe, like a pipe cleaner. I'm going to 
used a pipe cleaner to shield one cavity to the other with the uh, shielding paint. I just had to wait for this stuff to dry. So that's already shielded, blacked out. So what do you think about no pickup rings and just mounting the pickups in the cavity? So I don't know if you guys have seen or noticed that I've been using this little E thing with a small C on it with the wings and the tail and stuff. Well, that is part of Jeff over at Diamond Cut Graphics USA's uh, Hummingbird, his little decal inlay. And uh, I kind of chopped it up a little bit and, and came up with something. So um, I hope he doesn't get mad at me that I took one of his decals and cut it up to make something of my own. But I think I'm going to use that as a, well, actually, I know I'm going to use it as a logo since I've been kind of flashing it around on YouTube like crazy. Uh, also, on the headstock of this Zebra Stripe guitar, I've got something similar to it, just without the E. Anyways, this is going to be my logo for any guitar that I work on as far as uh, either a kit guitar. Um, when I do decide to build from scratch, I probably won't build the neck at first. Maybe just the bodies and then get into the neck later on. But if I buy the neck, I can put this on there as my own logo for that guitar. And it's going to be like universally shaped to where it'll fit across the headstock on a Les Paul style. And it also will go between the uh, tuners. Or if it's going to be a like a, um, say, an Ibanez headstock, you know, it'll fit perfectly on that as well. Not to say that I'm going to be taking Ibanez headstocks or any other brand name headstocks and converting them into my own. Uh, you know, if it's an Ibanez, it's an Ibanez or anything else for that matters. But if I do a restoration job on somebody else's guitar where it's a complete like body strip and, and you know, mods and, you know, just the whole works done to a, somebody's guitar, this logo will go on someplace on that guitar. Uh, putting my mark on it. Now, other people who do uh, restos, complete paint jobs and stuff on bodies of guitars and stuff, will somewhere write their name or sign their name to that body. Either it'll be in the, uh, the neck joint, uh, underneath one of the pickups, uh, inside the uh, back of the guitar where the springs are for a tremolo. You know, they put their mark, either sign their name, their company name, something. That's what I'm going to do with this as well. So I got a hold of Jeff and I was talking with him and I sent him a rough drawing of what I want to have made. And I'm going to have them made in a chrome silver type uh, of a decal. These are thin enough to where you could be clear coated over and, you know, unless you sand it off, it ain't going to come off. So I was thinking about doing this, and now it's become a plan. So I've already paid for it. I've already got it done. Um, Jeff is taking care of the rest of it on his end, and I told him there's no rush. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be something that now I have something I can call my own. And when I call, call it my own, um, you know, it just means a little bit more to you. And it's kind of a nice, not like... Uh, gaudy or or, or uh, just overly done of a logo. It's pretty simple, uh, decent design, and it's mine. So you guys take care, have a good one, and I'll catch up with y'all later.